Hello, this is Let's Talk About Myths, baby. And frankly, uh, it just occurred to me to sing it like that. So... Anyway, I'm super clever, I know. I'm Liv. This is the podcast where I tell you literally insane stories about Greek mythology. Today's episode is a mini myth. Now, this episode would have been better last week, but hindsight is twenty twenty, my friends, and I did not think of what a good idea it would be until it was too late. That's Lupin. Just, just meowing away. Mini myth. Phaethon, the teenage boy who ruined everything. So, this is the story of Phaethon, the son of the god Helios and the mortal woman Clymene. Also, some say she's a Nereid or Oceanid. Anyway, she's mortal or she's a nymph. Regardless, Helios is the god. The name Phaethon means shining, and that's probably because he was the son of, like I said, Helios. Helios is the god of the sun. See where I'm going here? Yeah, like I said, I should have done it before this week for obvious it got dark in some areas of the world reasons, but I didn't, okay? Helios had an incredibly important job in ancient Greece. See, much like how we've been led to believe that it's something scientific that causes echoes, it's actually just the rem remnants of a poor nymph who's forced to repeat our words back to us. So much like that, the sun would not rise or set in the sky were it not for Helios. Helios is tasked with driving the chariot, uh, which is pulled by flying horses, not pegasi, just generic flying horses, and they pull that big ball of gas and fire that we call the sun across the sky throughout the day and into the sunset. That's what the sun's made of, right? Just to reiterate, I have an English, or I have a degree in English and classical civilizations and science is not my forte. All to say, basically, it was Helios' job to keep the sun in the sky. Super important. Because where would we be without the sun? In darkness, as a select section of America learned the other day. It got cold here, but not dark, and the sun was like 88% covered by the moon. So, man, is that thing powerful. Just a sliver visible, and it was still totally light, if a bit chilly. Helios' super important job is also super time consuming because basically whenever it's light out, that's because old Helios is up in the sky driving that chariot. Because of this, he doesn't have a lot of time for his son, and so Phaethon lived with his mom on Earth. One day, a friend at school made fun of Phaethon for claiming that his father was a god. Like, you really expect us to believe that your dad is a god and he just happens to be unavailable literally all the time so you can't prove it? Sounds convincing, Phaethon. Phaethon, like any kid trying to prevent bullying, wants proof to show his friends, or rather the little jerks at school who are being dicks about his dad. So he heads home that day to his mom and he whines and whines and whines, just asking if she's a hundred percent sure that Helios is his dad, and like, if he is, where is the proof? Vitally important, mom. Clamini is a bit offended that her son would suggest that she's lying about his dad because, let's be honest, the implication there is that she's been with other men and we all know that that's something the ancient Greeks did not look kindly on. Men could obviously do it, that's fine, but ladies, hell no. Clymene tells Phaethon he can prove it himself and she sends him to find Helios' palace to ask him. It turns out that Helios' palace is in India, because that's where he starts his journey every morning. You know, India, the farthest east you can go? I'm gonna go ahead and speculate that this detail was established in or around the time of good old Alexander the Great, because he only made it to India, so obviously there was nothing further. Not like whole other continents and oceans or anything crazy like that. Anyway, I digress. Helios' palace is in India because that's where he starts his journey across the sky every morning. Phaethon gets to Helios' palace and he's totally blown away. 
it is, as you might expect, bright as hell and super shiny and golden. Tacky, perhaps, but dude is the god of the sun, so he can do what he wants. He finds Helios, so I assume it's nighttime now, and Helios is just chilling on his equally tacky and sparkly throne. Apparently, he's surrounded by a horde of mostly women, the personification of the hours, days, months, and the year, and all the seasons, so just a party and a half. Phaethon comes in and immediately starts bitching about he's been treat about how he's been treated because the kids don't believe his dad is actually the sun god Helios, and therefore his mom was obviously a whore because that's the only other explanation. It can't possibly be that his mom is actually a goddamn saint and that Helios is the one who hasn't been recognizing this kid up to this point. Oh no, it's definitely his mom's fault. Helios is deeply moved by Phaethon's whining and his complaints, and he totally agrees to recognize the kid as his own. So, apparently all it takes to get the father to pay attention is for the boy to go see him, not, you know, the woman he slept with creating a goddamn child in the first place. Typical. Helios is all, yeah, sure, I'll totally tell people you're mine. You want me to just, like, write a note to show the mean kid? Sure, whatever you want. Phaethon is psyched that it was that easy, and he decides to see what more he can get out of his super manipulatable dad. He rubs his chin contemplatively for another second while Helios is watching on with a wide smile and absolutely no credulity. Finally, Phaethon is like, well, obviously what I want is to drive the chariot of the sun. That's cool, right, Pops? Helios is finally a bit wary and, like, maybe this wasn't such a good idea? He tries to tell Phaethon that, you know, not even Zeus would think it was a good idea to drive the chariot of the sun. Those horses, they, like, really like me and so they probably wouldn't even like Zeus himself, let alone a snotty kid like you. But see, he'd already said whatever you want, which in hindsight was a super great idea. So he has to say yes because mythology. He can't just be like, nope, bad plan, this can only end awfully. Nope, he just says, yeah, for sure, have at it. He tells Phaethon to be careful, those fiery flying sun horses can be tricky, you know? And, you know, you're only a half-mortal teenager, so maybe be chill. Don't fly too high or too low. It's important, you, you know, pull it in the path of the sun, because how weird would it be for the sun to suddenly veer off course? Super fucking weird. Phaethon is a teenage boy, so he obviously thinks he'll be totally great at this, and he just takes off. Immediately after leaving the ground, he realizes what a stupid dummy he is to think that this was a good plan, but it is far too late for that. The horses quickly realize they have a total noob driving their chariot, and they take advantage. They start flying wildly off course, all willy-nilly in the sky, swerving and spiraling around. See, apparently that's how we got the Milky Way. It's like a fiery gash left behind by a dummy kid flying the sun around. Then they fly too close to the earth, they totally hit it and cause crazy fiery destruction. They burn the African continent, totally turning it into a desert because apparently it was totally green and lush before this. Obviously they mean the desert parts, maybe the Greeks never got to the green parts that obviously also exist. And apparently there was more damage that I hesitate to explain because it's batshit crazy and super problematic. So let me just preface real hard. This is mythology and ancient and totally offensive, but here we go. This is apparently what they believed. When the chariot burned Africa, it burned the skin of the people. And yeah, that's why they're dark skinned. Like I said, super offensive and weird, but then when were Europeans not offensive to races that looked air quotes, different. At this point, the chariot is totally destroying everything and basically ruining the world, so old Zeus needs to get involved. And his only solution, apparently, is to throw a lightning bolt at Phaethon to stop the chariot. Frankly, I would think that would just cause more fire because lightning, but it solves all the problems, except it definitely kills Phaethon. He lands in a river in Italy, and his sisters, the Heliades, 
something like that, who, yes, exist, but I imagine never had such insecurity that they needed confirmation of who their father was, nor did they need to drive his chariot because they were intelligent young women, I'm sure. They mourned Phaethon, their brother, but I guess that wasn't enough because someone then turned them into poplar trees that line either side of the river that he fell in, and so they mourn him always. And once again, the lives of women is ruined because of the st stupidity of a single man. Couldn't they have been sad about their brother without being turned into trees? I would certainly think so. Thank you all for listening to this mini myth. I really like these ones because I just get to throw something together and also it's not as much work. Thank you again for listening. Let's Talk About Myths Baby is available on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play and literally everywhere that I put it. It's a mystery. My logo art is by my super talented friend, Matthew Dunleavy, who I should be saying that in every episode because he de deserves credit. It's adorable. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and the general internet. It's basically all myths, baby. Drop me a line, say hello, suggest a myth, talk about a myth, anything. I'm always open to talk about mythology in this crazy, crazy world. Thank you again. My name is Liv. I love this shit.